Hello and welcome to Spring Commander Forge Alliance. We're in the World Wide People's Championships, the top division over 1900, where uh, the champion uh, with a new name here, Pachirico, who in this game is going to be Mia 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 I'm just going to keep calling him Pachirico, who's been the champion of this division for many, many months. Um, we'll see how long he can hold on to it. He's got a pretty good challenger, Bellacor who uh, is the one who chose this map. I guess the current rules are the challenger chooses, uh, man, all these different names. I'm going to totally screw with my head. Um, who chooses the first and the fourth maps in this best of uh, five. So the champion does have the benefit of choosing three of the maps, uh, including the critical final one in case this one makes it. Um, EEF versus Siren, uh, there's a chance for Siren to run over the EEF on this map with their quickness. And uh, I've actually played Mad Mozart quite a few times. Bellacor, Mad Mozart, the same person. Who's now Smoke. It's, uh, yeah. Let's see what the build order is. And uh, I've actually seen Pachirica play extremely well on this map against uh, people like uh, uh, Blackheart. So I'm not really sure this is one map where Pelico, where uh, Pachirico is particularly weak. A very close fight. Yeah, that was huge. This is Hunter. Beating up on uh, Megmarine and uh, Snoop. I thought that Snoop uh, had a chance to get back in that fight. And you can see the regeneration on this. Just plus one means a lot for a light assault but a tank coming out. So setting the early tone uh, with Siren, those Manti are going to be putting on a lot of pressure against uh, Bacharico. Looks like third air from second air. And this is so much faster for Bellacor. Yeah, overall it's just a huge advantage. Maybe a little more power, maybe a, little, a couple more mask extractors. But um, yeah, actually where where is the advantage? Where is all this extra mass coming from? I guess it's these, yeah. So these mass extractors is the difference. Here comes a bomber from a second air, which is slower than a bomber from a third air. Yeah, so Bellacor with a lot of aggression, but not getting a lot of early mass extractors. First the uh, bomb takes out something. It's already got one kill. Well, that's a very... Yeah, that was a nice kill from Bellacor. Meanwhile... A successful dodge, that was very well played by Bellacor. Up on top, some flak not coming out. Oh, Ooh, that was a bit of luck. And now Manta together with the bomber, this bomber with two kills. Creating all kinds of problems, and is it going to get another pass? Yep, a total of three engineers killed. And now the Manta are going to be putting all this pressure all over. Pachirico's base, minute four. Gotta say, besides this mass advantage, Bellacor really neglecting his eco, you could say. Uh, although Nai is gonna catch up. Um, putting a lot more into aggression. And so far that aggression has really been paying off. Maybe a little micro. Yeah, with... Uh, <laughs> yeah, Manti all over the place. So if you're... Pachirico in this situation, you got issues. And a little bit of excess power as well. Bellacor, that's a huge advantage on the reclaim. Bellacor, instead of getting those early mass extractors, looks like he's just been reclaiming a lot less uh, mass in this position. Yeah, I think that's the difference. He's been reclaiming these small rocks up in the front. And <laughs> no respect, just rushing through the middle. He's gonna, if he takes out these hydras, yeah, I think this is one of the reasons Bellacor chose this map. He had the plan for this maximum aggression, and uh, Pachirico maybe if he would have chosen uh, Cybern as well, although theoretically playing defense here would have been all right with UEF. But so far there's really no... S That's another uh, reinforcement. Coming in, once these two uh, forces combine, there's really nothing that can be done against them. 
and uh, yeah, now we are really seeing a big difference in the income. Pechurico or Bellacorp basically has the entire top. Meanwhile, there's about 10, 15 tanks just sitting there. And uh, yeah, when you got this numbers advantage, it makes your life very easy. And when you're trying to recover, you're trying to kill this force as quickly as possible. Sometimes you don't regroup in time. I need a yeah, I need the BL. So he just uh, threw in the towel. That early light assault bot really set the tone, but it was really that aggression and the use of reclaim from Bellicor instead of grabbing those extra mask extractors that uh, Pachurico got. So after eight minutes, the challenger gets the first victory. The next four maps, three of those four are going to be chosen by Pachurico. And he, Pachurico will, will need to win three of the next four if he hopes to retain his title. Well, welcome to game two. This is the ditch. Uh, not one of my favorite maps. A map with a ridiculous amount of mass. Uh, Bellacor already saying it's going to be a 1v1. He's saying he's uh, not likely to win this. I have heard that Pachirico is very good on this map. Interestingly, he chose Cybern. Uh, not the faction I probably would have chosen. Seraphim seems a lot more... Uh, yeah, a lot more straightforward given the floating RD, the cruiser. The ass washer, things like that. Um, we'll see why would you choose Siren. Maybe we'll get a chance to see that. So if it's 1v1, uh, then it'll be a best of three left over with the fourth game chosen by Bellacor. On that. One thing I'd like to say with this journey, I haven't really seen the other uh, divisions. There are three other divisions posting their replays for the final, so it'd be nice to see those. I know that uh, there isn't the challenger every single week and if the, even if there is sometimes the champion isn't available so it'd be nice uh, if people did posted a couple more comments uh, in that uh, thread just so uh, we're all aware of what's happening second error with the uh, yeah this is typically the engineer that can get here quickest and the build order, you see a very different build order for Pachirico, only getting one mask extractor. Meanwhile, the build order for Bellacor is a little more straightforward. This is really power oriented, relying on reclaim, which is exactly what you want to do on maps with huge reclaim. Uh, Bellacor, pretty much playing it, yeah, the usual way. And he's got this massive uh, deficit in power now. He will try to catch up by getting this hydro. But now already the build capacity difference and a bomber coming out. All these things are going to make a fairly big difference. Although we are seeing these expanding engineers much quicker for Bellacor. Those could make a difference in the future unless he loses them to this bomber. And uh, now actually Bellacor beginning to catch up in the power game. A big air spam, expanding energy. It's fairly late on that hydro. You see a lot of air is also planned for Bellacor. And a bomber for Bellacor as well. So this uh, finishing this uh, factory will be critical. I imagine that would be a primary target for this bomber. It might be able to get there in time. There's also another possible engineer so this bomber has the potential to create all kinds of problems a little bit of dodging will this be finished yeah it looks like dodging just in time from Belcor although he did have to cancel a couple orders to pull that off a bomber for Belcor going to the top I oh, guess to the bottom from the bottom to the higher bottom a drop coming in from uh, Pachurico instead of walking He's just going to use his air. A lot of scouts from Bellacor. We still got that 100 power deficit for most of this game. Let's see where uh, Pachirico chooses to put his mass. He has actually upgraded a bunch of mass extractors. Continues to make power and more factories. We're also seeing upgraded mass extractors, although slightly slower for Bellacor. 
and I just heard a bomber. Ooh, a successful bomb. Oh, this is nice. That was a fairly important engineer that Bellacor just took out. That could make a difference. And looking at this game right now, I think if there was one advantage, it is these engineers, once they finish the factory, a lot of potential for reclaim and mass extractors. Otherwise, uh, I think Bellacor doing quite well. And uh, with this drop, uh, he could even things up if he can capture that position. Another difference to look for is, of course, the uh, presence of Tech 2. So far, no Tech 2. Because, yeah, switching to Tech 2 p is a lot more efficient in terms of mass. And, yeah, it looks like oh, this will be an interesting drop from Bellacor if you can pull both of those off. And uh, on the ditch, uh, Navy and Tech 2 Air will be critical and eventually Tech 3 Air experimentals. And I guess one reason to pick Cybern is for the bug, which would be really good. Also, the Scathus could be pretty nice. And with all this uh, reclaim, if you take Tech 3 Air and you start spamming bugs, that's probably very difficult to build, to, to beat. And uh, they're power stalls or something. Yeah, we now seen some tech two. I imagine it's tech two air from uh, Patch Rico, beginning the production of tech two power Bellacor. Also, some power problems. Doesn't have any tech two air yet, so he is at a disadvantage. Looks like he's got a tech two ACU. This is a very bad time for uh, Bellacor's economy. This transition to Tech 2 was a lot smoother for Pechirico, which is translating now into this big um, advantage in mass. Also, because his drop was a little later, uh, grabbing all these mass extractors was a bit quicker for uh, Pechirico. However, this is an interesting drop from. Uh, Bellacor, if he can establish uh, an army, he has the potential of running everything over. Doesn't look like Pechirico has any idea. A bit of an air fight over Bellacor's base, forcing a bunch of flak. And now both players going into the navy nearly simultaneously and now tech to gunships. So this would have been a nice position for uh, Bellacor had it not been discovered and tech to gunships. Why? Like the gunships are so nice they can be very quick to respond to any kind of problems so what we're seeing is a very good uh, teching scouting using tech to gunships and drops drops are fairly critical looks like uh, yeah this was a bit of a lost opportunity Bellacor had these engineers in this position for a long time but they have just started building they could have already put up like five or six factories and there, that spam would have probably run everything over. We're seeing Tech 2 land with Wagners from, from Pachorica up on top. As Bellacor still behind on power, but at least now he has some. But actually, yeah, he's been power stalling. The last few minutes have just been a total power stall for Bellacor. Didn't anticipate having this much mass, I guess. And... Uh, until until right now it was fairly even but i think the last few minutes have resulted in a huge advantage for Pachirico and uh, now the chances of winning for Bellacor are quite low unless Pachirico makes some sort of mistake which isn't likely given that he chose this map it's probably as a long-term plan Wagner's he'll take care of that position yeah, big lost opportunity. Gunships are going to go on an assault. Really nothing to defend against them unless so we see some flak here shortly. We are seeing supporting tech to factories. And uh, early frigate suppression. As both players working on tech to navy destroyers. Actually, never mind. I don't see a tech to navy from Bellacor. That could be a problem for Bellacor. Come on, where is the tech to flak? No tech to flak, that's a problem. 50 mass deficit for 
Bellacor. Some Yanceys coming out to get rid of the frigate. And uh, where is the destroyer? Once the destroyer is finished, that's going to be a big problem. And the gunships. Yeah, not much fighting has <laughs> taken place on Pachirico's side. Most of the fighting has been on the left. Looking at the uh, total reclaim, we're seeing 60,000 for Bellacor, 74,000 for Pachirico. In terms of what's in the bank, they're very similar. So Petrico has used quite a bit more mass, and not surprisingly, because he did have more power to use all that mass. No resource allocation yet, and no tech three for Bellacor. Seeing a, that's a lot of uh, tech two pigeons from Petrico. Also getting some tech three mass structures. No tech three yet. Fairly big submarine spam, but destroyers out in a massive Tech 1 air fight, which Bellacor actually winning something here. I think he's going to take air control. He should if he responds with these planes. Gunships coming in once again. And this is a fairly big Tech 2 land spam, which is having some res uh, results. He wants to knock uh, Pachirico out of this position. This is a lot of potential reclaim you don't want to just give away. Is this spot and this spot actually some very good uh, places to take away from your enemy? Deck one flag versus deck two gunships, and uh, an important fight: Yancey versus Wagner. I think Wagner's with the numbers, but only a few of those Wagners are going to be left over. Gunships now four. Bellacor and uh, they're gonna fly over a cruiser. They can kill it if they just target it. No, they're just gonna fly over that cruiser and take it to the face. That's very unfortunate. T torpedo bombers for Bellacor. Don't want to neglect the cruiser like that. Also, it appears that Pachirico taking over the middle island. You can put some flak on there, you can put some radar, you can even put cruise missiles on there not a position you just want to give up and it does appear the gunships from Bellacor trying to take out the position with four mass extractors of the Tech 1 flak already going up Tech 3 air now for Pachirico so Bellacor actually in terms of mass wow he's really caught up 88 reclaimed uh, 88,000 huge excess of power Bellacor needs a low power. It's fairly good balance, but you don't want to just not have your radars working. So, Bellacor, I think, has caught up. However, he has major problems on all kinds of areas uh, of the map. I think he might actually lose this naval battle. He is later into the Tech 3 air, so once Tech 3 air is established, and actually a fairly big assault. Yancey's uh, making it across. They need to, yep, they stopped the Tech 1 PD, but more Tech 1 PDs going up. They want to just avoid those. And uh, where is the floating arty? And once again, we're seeing it looks like uh, Pechorico. The only time the mass looks similar is when Pechorico is power stalling. And suddenly, Pechorico just got a whole bunch more power. He's got a whole bunch of Tech 3 PGENs and nukes here would be great for either player. Bellacor 91,000 I think. Pachirico, wow this is a huge difference in reclaim. If you got uh, 70,000 difference in reclaim it's very difficult to compete. Not really sure where all that came from. This is actually the top plateau here. Something not to neglect looks like, yeah you can see all this mass. Mozart forgetting to drop onto the top plateau and grabbing the mass. This probably didn't account for the entire 70,000, but yeah, also the metal island here and uh, these positions. This is where Pachirico is reclaiming. And Strad Bombs. Five kill Strad Bomber. But uh, these Strad Bombs are very dangerous to use when you don't have air control and Navy has been taken over. Oh, and uh, interesting spot for Pachirico in the pond, some dirty water. You know, 
uh, the strut continues to go to work up on top it's not really going to make that much difference when the deficit and mass is so huge looks like Bellacora is calling a GG yeah and after 20 minutes fairly one-sided game for a while I thought Bellacora could have cut up and actually it was very even until about seven minutes when suddenly Bellacora in that transition to tech two uh, power just completely power stalled for like three minutes and then after that he had a huge deficit so yeah the last game I believe I forgot to look forgot to look at um, the stats at the end we'll look at that in this game yeah that's mass energy yeah no surprises that's total kills. I wonder what happened here. There must have uh, maybe some tech one airflow or flak or something like that. Hello and welcome to Painted Desert. Uh, it's a classic map from uh, Tone Annihilation, 1997. Many years since then, uh, but this is a remade version. Remember, <laughs> you would start somewhere here. And uh, it's a testament how large uh, Tone Annihilation was. This map, uh, to the Tone Annihilation map, is like a Supreme Commander 2 map to Supreme Commander Forge Alliance maps. So, yeah, the scale in Tone Annihilation, based, at least based on this map, was significantly bigger than it is in this game. Although the scale in this game, I think, is big enough for most people. Alright, so, 1-1. One, one. This one was chosen by... Vachorico, interesting that he chose this one. It's a map that's unusual in that you can see all these mass spots. They're so spread out, there isn't really a spot where you can camp. So it's a map for those with a lot of uh, a very high APM. The APM for Pachorico is probably higher than anybody among the best players. Although that's probably not uh, certain. That's uh, some of the numbers. We'll, we'll, I'll put the APM numbers after every single game in this video. So, uh, yeah, early on it's just so little mass, but there is a lot of reclaim. So it's a really a question of how much re this reclaim is worth. So, yeah, a lot of manual reclaim from Pacho Rico. And a uh, very aggressive bomber. Scout first, then bomber. Scout, bomber, scout. And uh, two air factories for Bellacor. Yeah, this both ball Cybern. Nearly identical. Maybe a little more tech, um, uh, uh, a couple more earlier P gens for Bet Rico. But, uh, I'm not really sure what's going to be better. I'm not sure if the scout for Petrika may have seen this bomber. Let's see, are we going to see interceptors? Yeah, interceptor, scout, interceptor. So earlier, oh no. Where did uh, Bellacor suddenly get all this extra power? He does have a land spam planned. And uh, one thing to think about in this one is where are the ECU is going to go. But these bombers could be very critical if they can cut away these expanding engineers, because an expanding engineer has the potential for a lot of uh, mass. In terms of these expanding engineers, who has an advantage? There are two going to the top. There's one going to the middle. There's all, also some light assault bots. And... Uh, this is going to be the first blood, yep. Good kill from Bellacor, there is an analogous bomber up on top. See if this bomber can get more kills, if it can take out a couple NGs in the base. Those are not as valuable as expanding ones, but still. Anything dead over here looks like good defense. I don't see any dead expanding engineers. and. Uh, Pachirico has a big plan for a land spam in the middle of this map. 
still fairly low uh, mass income total reclaim numbers oh wow that's so much reclaim four thousand four so, oh so bellacore even has more mass uh, yeah this is another map that from Pachirica that's full of reclaim not as crazy as the previous one the ditch but still still a lot of these rocks and they're very juicy this is a different version of painted desert than what I've seen in the past looks like a drop from uh, Bellacor to the middle and a bit of an air fight that Bellacor will easily win and uh, overall from watching these games it seems like Bellacor always produces uh, more units while Pachirica produces a little more teching at least that's uh, the impression from the last three games. Although in the ditch it was kind of one-sided, there was some uh, eco mistakes. So that tech wanted to take three stri that tech two stri uh, transition. And interestingly, Pechorico just power spamming like crazy in the base, and that is uh, one fairly big difference. Bellacor might be power. Oh wow! Once again. Just like on the ditch, the power stall catches up to Bellacore. And uh, yeah, you don't want the power stall. And this transport has nothing in it, but is in danger of dying. Some Tech 2 mask extractors. Yeah, that's really sad having a power stall this big early on. Oh, that's. Looks like the power stall has been solved. At least partially by Bellacor. In terms of map control, there is an advantage it seems. Ooh, this is a nice base here from Bellacor if you can get that going. But how do you even begin to think about it if you're Bellacor? I mean, you have so many different situations, so much different stuff going on. Yeah, not at all clear how to play this map. Seems that Bellacor might have an advantage in how many units he has out on the sides. In the middle of a bit of a, bit of a fight that Bellacor might win. This gesture is, uh, could be useful. I want to see the move to take two. Is it going to be land? Yep, land. Rhino's coming out for uh, Pachirico, tech to land for Bellacor as well. And this is where if you get this base here and you get some tech to engineers, maybe some cruise missiles from Bellacor would be nice. Also engineers over here from Bellacor need to grab all these mass extractors. Looks like they're just busy reclaiming. So this map, uh, map control is very critical, not just for the mass extractor, but for all the rocks that you can get. And now uh, we see why both players chose, uh, Siren single Manti running around all over the map are quite uh, effective. Let's see if this, uh, oh, this is some Tech 2 here in the middle, some Tech 2 flak. So if you grab the center, I uh, imagine, let's see how far a cruise missile can shoot. If you grab the center, now you need, you want to be somewhere around about this distance to hit the main base that has the tech to max structures and potentially tech to power. We see tech to power started. But once again, in the power game, Pechirico way ahead, 27,000 reclaim, uh, Bellacor 2300. And uh, a lot of blinking going on. A lot of tech to land supporting factories. So tech to land out on the field here on the left side. Oh man, what the heck? One place that's been fairly quiet is the top left corner. Top right's been uh, lit up by all these single manta. The bottom corner, also fairly safe. But uh, overall, just the income is a big advantage for Pachirico. And it looks like he is now getting a fairly big lead in the reclaim game as well. And uh, going through the top, some Tech 2 units. 
the last tech to engineers for Petro Rico. Eight kill rhinos. It looks like this terrain's pretty good for rhinos. Deck to gunships. The ACU for Petro Rico still back home. The ACU for Bellacor still back home. And actually, given tech to air out in the field. This ACE could be vulnerable unless it's next to some Tech 2 flag. We are seeing Corsairs and uh, yeah, the obvious target is that. If this Corsair can take out the Tech 2 PGEN, which I imagine that's what it's going to be targeting. That looks like it was just left all by itself. Resource allocation. <laughs> okay, so Fatshirika uh, running away with, with this in the Tech game. In terms of map control, it's fairly similar, you can even say an advantage for Bellacorp, but it has not translated into something. So it's not just where your unit starts, but how many engineers you have in the positions that you control and what those engineers are doing. And it does appear that still actually some rocks left here and there. But quite a bit more reclaiming has been accomplished by Apache Rico. Uh, this force, uh, if there's hope for Bellacor, has got to lie with this force. If we can make a major attack and force, uh, and actually we're seeing multiple assaults to the top. Bit of an air fight over Bellacor's base that could uh, supply some reclaim. And uh, I think the, those Corsairs targeted these two uh, tech to pigeons. I think this game would be over. Tech 3 land now with Loyalists, so Loyalists are going to be great on this map. Do we see Tech 3 land yet for... Yeah, no Tech 3 land for Pachirico. We're going to see a supporting Tech 3 land factor here. Actually, Tech 1 PD is uh, being quite effective. Yeah, well placed Tech 1 PDs for Pachirico. Although, uh, yeah, I never like to play this kind of map. Just watching this makes me kind of dizzy. And Rhinos. Yeah, always bring some tech to flag with you. Being pretty effective, seven kills. But Ras is now done for Pachirico and a straightforward move to take three air. He's recycled a whole bunch of take one um, power for the mass. And this is where I think Bellacor needs to think about a couple uh, shields around his ACU and a stack to power. And cruise missiles. Oh, wow. <laughs> This is a pretty cool team of uh, engineers, but some missiles are going to deny this base. That's nice to see. For some people it's difficult to pull something like this off when it's just, this is the entire fight, but pulling off something like that when you're fighting an entire map. Yeah, you gotta stay calm and aware of what's happening. Take the air is now available. And yeah, this power and mass advantage is huge. The reclamation number is 75,000 Bellacor, 54,000, 20,000 difference. See if the loyalists, I'd love these loyalists to break into single groups and just assault random places on the map. Take their land out now for Pachirico, he's also got Tech 3 gunships. Yeah, Tech 3 gunships are going to dominate. Yeah, these loyalists need to do something. They're not getting better with age. And I wonder what the APMs were for these two players in this.
No tech three. Oh, now finally some ASF. We are seeing the tech one NTs. I'm gonna try to shut down the tech three gunships. Tech two gunships. And yeah, once this all this dies, then that is going to actually be map control advantage for Pachirico. He's got units all over the map. Is there an elite force? As the deficit just continues to grow, 92,000 reclaim. Looks like Bellacor just in a total s stall. Why is that? I mean, he's been reclaiming as well, but it looks like maybe the fact that he hasn't had the metal, getting this metal reclaim could have been pretty big. Because that's uh, overall, if it wasn't for this massive reclaim difference, this game I think would be a lot closer. As gunships now inside Bellacor's base taking out tech to power, the resource allocation is nearly complete. This is very, very sad. Under 4,000 health left. Just need to nudge that AC over the edge. I think uh, he will survive. But a strat bomb would have been nice here to finish. And actually, inside of uh, Pachirico's base, there are some loyalists but uh, they really won't do any serious damage. Here comes the strat. And after 21 minutes, this is, oh man. This type of maps are not for me to play or to cast, but yes, this is the kind of maps that Pachirico likes. So 2-1 in favor of Pachirico. See if Bellacor uh, on a map of his choice can tie this up. Hello and welcome to game four. This one chosen by Bellacor and the recently familiar regular six. Bellacor has to win this one to force game five. The last two games, uh, misplaced factory GG. So Pachorico saying he's screwed based on the placement. Oh no, this is so horrible. <laughs> no, it's not a big deal. Yeah, the last two games are pretty ridiculous maps uh, chosen by Pachirico. I I don't know. They're just too insane. Mortal Kombat from Bellacor. I knew that when his uh, yeah Smoke Kitana. That's a bunch of Mortal Kombat characters. That's cool. Of course, uh, Pachirico doesn't. Uh, have a name changing mod, he just has Mion, 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 Mion. <sighs> yeah, we'll see if there's anything crazy on the side run, side run battle. The usual that we'll see is the expansion with the ACU, grabbing the reclaim, and uh, also grabbing the mass tractors in the back. Drops should be featured, tech to air, tech to land, and the fact that there's no UEF. Might mean these players are playing for a short game. Bellacor, second air. First to land, actually no air whatsoever from Pachirico as well. See how that works out for him. First bomber, so that's gonna be good. Liu Kang, it's a badass character. First bomber, second, yep, and then some Inties. We'll see how Pachirico deals with the threat of this bomber. He's going to spot the bomber now that Hunter from Pachirico is dead. And uh, he's going to be looking for expanding engineers. He's going to find the ACU, a stream of... These still hunters? No, those are Manti now. For uh, Pachirico. Pachirico needs to be very aggressive with his units now. He should have a land advantage. And if he can avoid getting killed, uh, here you can see those engineers were in a clump. They split. At the last moment, some flak coming out as well. Fourth air is complete. Bomber with only one kill, and I gotta say, 
This turned out to be quite good. Ex yeah, still eight health. This bomber needs to turn around, kill that engineer. Otherwise, this is a bit of a disaster. Looking back at uh, Bellacor's um, base, he's gonna have a lot of manta here shortly. We only see the third land factory just coming up. We already see five. Uh, yeah, the fifth, sixth are planned, and uh, this will be a critical battle. I think the micro there from Balakor was a little better. And uh, yeah, he recycled a couple of these manta, getting hit only by fresh manta. Another bomber coming out, total air domination. Looks like this engineer was killed, so that first bomber wasn't total failure. Two, bo two engineers killed. And uh, another push from Pecherico. Big numbers for Balakor. And uh, this early three land build, I can't say that it really produced any kind of good rating in terms of how far along the ACUs are. It looks like Bellacor is just a little quicker. He did not produce a factory here as well. Instead, there's a point defense in the middle. Well, that would have been a nice bomb, piece of bombing from Bellacor if you would have pulled that off. Similar numbers, maybe a slight advantage to Pecherico's also got some Medusas in the middle. A drop coming in, still only four land factories, we're seeing five, six land factories. Bellacor uh, significantly ahead on power, a little behind on mass income. And now in the middle, I think the micro uh, has been slightly better for Bellacor in this one. Overall, because the numbers should have been in Pecherico's favor, but Pecherico hasn't able to win any land battles, which is not good. Perhaps a drop. Yep, some engineers are going to get a factory, some arty. Definitely want to get there as soon as possible. Looks like straight up arty drop for Bellacor. As the land advantage isn't really producing too many results, except this battle in the middle. But I think together with these Medusas, perhaps Petrik can pull something off. Interesting, nearly simultaneous engineer drops on the sides. But uh, Bellacor is going to have a Nenji drop here on the mask tractor as well. As we see a push through the middle, Bellacor forced to retreat. Uh, and this means that the two middle positions with some Hydros could be in Petrikos, um Possession. He's gonna get some PD, some radar here. Yeah, this probably will uh, die. Take to land for Bellacor. Bellacor looks like Bellacor has been upgrading mask tractors as well. And with tech to land, these rhinos are gonna be quite dominant. On the side, some raiding from Bellacor. Won't really last too long, it doesn't seem. The surviving Manta. Looks like the sieves in the corners are almost dead. And this is engineers versus uh, tanks. Engineers are gonna die. Let's see what kind of impact the rhinos can make. There's already a rhino with eight kills. A couple more on the sides. And uh, this is significant now. Is that tech to power? Why is there so much more power for Pachurica? Is it all just tech one? He does have some tech two engineering, so tech two land. The very defensive tank for Bellacor, unable to save the mask tractor. And uh, quite a few PDs in this in this game from both players. So after the first ten minutes, uh, very similar economies. Um, earlier, Tech Two Land has restored kind of parity in terms of map control, and things are not at all clear who has an advantage if there is an advantage. 
seen a number of support factories and number of tech to mask tractors. Haven't seen too much air. Haven't seen tech to air. Looks like a counter drop here on the side. Single Rhino will take care of things. Perhaps, uh, no, I don't even think there's really an air advantage to Bellacore. He will attempt to force a fight. Could be dangerous given the deck to land presence and uh, a fairly aggressive drop if this can be successful. So you can see that move from Bellacore. He was uh, actually both players playing nearly identical here. That's rather hilarious. And now uh, this critical air fight, I think Bellacore is going to win it. And uh, this is a single Rhino versus two Medusas. Those are going to die. If this PD is finished, this could be a big save for Bellacore. Up on top, no PDs. And these Rhinos will run everything over. Really no question about it. And uh, lost opportunities for Pachirico. In the middle, we are seeing Stealth and for the most part, Tech 2. And Medusas for Bellacore. His uh, force does look like it is quite a bit uh, stronger and uh, still tech 2 some flak tech 2 power bellacore any tech 2 power yet doesn't appear to be the case he's definitely got a lot of build capacity some tech 2 engineers standing by it's a good organization on his uh, tech 2 base looks like a tech 2 drop for Pachirico petrica has got a problem. This force from um, Bellacore is going to run everything over. There's really nothing anywhere here that can stop it. He'll need to either build up a pretty big tech to force of his own or go tech 3 or get his ACU into the middle. And uh, for uh, Bellacore, it's a choice of where to attack. Oh, this is where the Medusa, I think, is going to make the difference. Oh, looks like a counter drop from Pachirico. And this is where this PD saved the day. So Bellacore now behind on power and actually quite a bit behind on mass somehow. Because there was quite a bit of upgrading. Let's look at the upgrade numbers. Uh, in terms of reclaim, 8,700. Total of four Tech 2 mask extractors. We also see a Tech 2 power for Bellacore. 8100 reclaimed and five tech to mask tractors as the ACU now for Pachirico getting a couple of tech two kills and that's where the force that big force in the middle from Bellacore decided to go into this middle expansion we'll wipe everything out we'll have to deal with some tech one bombers meanwhile the ACU are overcharging uh, the mountain it seems and actually, Pachirico's ACU can get himself in trouble here if both these forces combine. As Rhinos, notoriously horrible against PDs, getting killed by PDs. Air domination now, and oh man, these tech 2 forces are all over the place. I really think Bellacore is just a god on top of uh, Pachirico. I'm not really sure why Pachirico can't deal with this. He didn't really have a big deficit in terms of mass. Because this was one big issue where... Belker continued to hold on to his mask tractors and yeah, some major uh, upgrades. Belker now significantly ahead on mass, although Belker did uh, get overcharged here quite a few times. And uh, if Petrico can survive, he's got a number of opportunities for reclaim. However, a second wave, this one is a stealth force coming in. But. Uh, these PDs are going to get a lot of kills. Looks like the fire has been put out inside of Pachirico's base. One of his Tech 2 pigeons nearly died. He's almost got the second one. Major Tech 2 land spam. No Tech 3 yet. Still just Tech 2. So very prolonged Tech 2 stage here between these two players. And... Uh, this uh, this is a very close fight. It would really depend on uh, overcharging. I think uh, 
Yeah, it was so close. But, oh, the gunships now. Can those make that final difference? There's a bit of a gamble there from... Oh, but it it, it might still pay off. I really, did, I really thought that was a bad move from Bellacor. But those gestures made just enough. There was also a couple units from the back. And Bellacor ties this up. I... It's always a hard judgment when you're attacking ACUs with Tech 2 land. The ACU gets a lot of it quick and the overchargers versus Tech 2, it's just very painful to see. But uh, Bellacor just did just enough against that ACU. Reinforcements coming in and uh, Fetcherico could have survived that, I think. It would have been really bad for Bellacor. I think it would have been a big comeback. But uh, okay, I gotta not forget to look at the Stats at the end, I'm pretty sure that Bellacor was ahead on most. Oh wow, never mind, this was extremely even. In terms of energy, looks like Bellacor was catching up. Their air, very even battle with a nice tactical kill. Oh, look at that mass. The difference of about 80. Yep, it was a very close fight. Hello and welcome to game 5 between uh, Bellacor and Pachirico. The last one won by uh, Pachirico just barely, sorry, by Bellacor, by Mad Mozart, she's too many names. Um, by the Russian and the Ukrainian. A very nice choice of map uh, here. I was worried about uh, Bet you recoup choosing some of the crazy map. Maybe De Rosas. I would not have been surprised. Uh, but it's something a lot more uh, common. Still a lot of reclay, but not nearly as much. And it's a map where Mozart should play quite well. No mysteries for anybody. Well, maybe for some people like me. I'm sure there's these people know something that I, I, I don't know. Some general news about this tourney is uh, there will be a website for the tourney which will keep track of all the winners who is the current winner should be pretty nice a big thanks for setting that up um for people who are um yeah so that should be coming in the near future also suggestions are always welcome on how things should be done and what works thanks for a suggestion about uh the front uh page of this channel I think uh, that was a good point. So here, uh, the question is, uh, when is air gonna come out? Looks like, oh, yeah, yeah, come on. Uh, second air is gonna be a lot quicker for Bellacor. The air factory a lot later for Pachirico, who's doing some very efficient building here, it seems. Yeah, he's doing the dance. Sometimes you can see, uh, it's like, the motions of a base as it's uh, being produced early on. You gotta make it look badass. If you can make it look like it's all uh, rehearsed, it's like it's a dance that you've been rehearsing and how well you execute it. That's really how it should be done. Third land coming out. Yeah, you should have. You should see the efficiency in the in the motions. Looks like a tank versus a light assault pod tank finally prevails. A bomber for Bellacor takes out. There's also a bomber coming out. For Pachirico should have been spotted. Inties and scouts standing by. And a good dodge it seems from Pachirico. Only one kill so far for Bellacor. And expanding NGs on Sirtis are absolutely critical. The longer you can prevent your uh, enemy from grabbing this expansion, the better you're going to do. Flag forced for, oh, three kills for that bomber. Good bomber. This is the furthest expanding engineer for Pachirico. And here you can see these two engineers expanding for Bellacor. So early on, definitely an advantage. However, we did see the build order for Pachirico. did involve a couple more land factories, so he might have a land advantage he does have the forces to protect the very advanced engineers so he's gonna have this position very solid and this will allow him to put the pressure on land onto the top expansion of Bellacor 
and actually on the bottom side also good pressure from Pachurico. So even though Pachurico did lose all those engineers, he is going to have the tools to pay back with. Four Manta versus five Strikers. Looks like Pachurico uh, will attempt to regroup. And this is a very nice engineer. If you can finish this factory, Bellacor is going to have a huge advantage. Because, yeah, this engineer still has a lot of walking to do. In the middle, we see artilleries. Still some time, actually. It looks like both players will get to the middle nearly simultaneously. And, uh, yeah, looks like uh, Pecherico content with pulling back, getting a new PD, making a very solid position. And uh, actually now Bellacor here on the bottom, if he just rushes in, he can uh, create all kinds of problems for Pecherico. Just to remind people, this is game five, so whoever wins this uh, becomes the new champion. And this is a pretty big game for Pecherico, given that he's been champion for since uh, the start of this journey in this division and he was the final champion in uh, the previous uh, run of Worldwide People's Championships. So it's a very long run for him. I'm not really sure how many total defenses he has, but that's something that we will be able to keep track of on the new website. So players who have been playing so far in the second installment in Worldwide People's Championships too be nice if you can complete those stats post how many times you've defended I'll try to make that process as uh, seamless as simple as possible yep the reclaim competition is very even mostly medusas you can see pds from both players to retreat just a very solid gameplay bellacore rushes in and uh, actually now this force from uh Pachirica, both players are going to be successful at denying these expansions this factory is very cri very critical for Bellacor. He'll be able to recover very quickly. Bellacor ahead on power, ahead on mass. As yeah, if there is an advantage for somebody, oh, I didn't notice this factory. This factory is huge for Pachirico. If he didn't have that, yeah, it would take him much longer to grab all that. Jade has retreated. All the way to the base, which might mean Pachirico will get to keep the middle. There's still actually some reclaim here. You don't want to neglect, and maybe a mistake. You don't want to be standing still against artillery. And uh, see if Medusa's. Oh, that was a great Medusa shot. However, oh, the artillery on both sides just did so much damage in that. It's not something you often see. Usually the tanks are moving, but when the tanks are standing still like that, they're very vulnerable. This factory has been denied, so now... Yeah, this is kind of difficult now for Bellacor. He is now behind. 8300 reclaim, Bellacor 7600. Major fight going on on the bottom. And this wall getting broken down. Medusas need to come in and uh, kill these PDs if there's any hope. Yeah, Tech 2. Got some TMD. Any Tech 2 yet? Yep, Tech 2 for both players. Interesting how these players have such similar gameplay on this map. It's, it's a sign of a map that everybody knows very well. A lot more support factories. Actually, support factories everywhere now. For Pachurico. Bellacor... Also has some support factories producing Medusas. So if this continues uh, even like this, I think uh, Pachirica is going to have a significant advantage at Tech 3 stage. Looks like Tech 2 upgrade for Pachirico and the ACU for Bellico going to the bottom. Given that it uh, looks like Cyber Force is having some problems, although now Rhino's in position and uh, T2PD following up this assault.
Yeah, if this PD is finished, which I think it will be, it will be huge. I will deny quite a bit. Uh, at least three, three Tech 1 Mask Tractors plus the position from which to defend. The middle might belong to Bellacor. And something to look at is uh, the number of Tech 2 Mask Tractors. At least four for uh, Pachurico. Bellacor sitting on actually five. And some some trouble now for Bellacor in his top expansion. He's got a couple of very vulnerable engineers. As uh, the first major Tech 2 land force from Bellacor or Pachurico moving in. Pillars versus Medusas. Uh, yeah, these pillars are going to run everything over. Meanwhile, this uh, Tech 2 PD, 11 kills. Yeah, maybe this is the unit of the game so far. And actually, I think a Reptile. But now, Pillars and Shield. All kinds of problems. Cruise Missile Launcher for Bellacor. What has he got to shoot at? He's got a bunch of TMDs to shoot at. This is Sport Factory, this ACU, this Tech 2. I don't think that Tech 2 Mask Tractors can be taken out, although the thing about Cyber and uh, Missiles is they can take out TMDs. And total disaster up on top for Bellacor. Shang Tsung. Uh, yet, I think uh, Petra Rico has really got this one. Unless this missile launcher can do a lot of damage. It's already got a whole bunch of missiles loaded up. Let's see how far they can actually make it. Oh, and that one actually hit the mountain. Yeah, it looks like it was just the support factory, which really wasn't that big a deal. Johnny Cage getting pushed off his position. Yeah, losses everywhere. Four kills, 18 kills on the MVP. And up on top, we can see engineers getting dropped off. Desperate times, desperate measures. And this force way out of position. And uh, I think what we've seen how critical these spots are. If you can set up a good defense. And uh, if you can set up a very good offense. Make all the difference in this one. Air domination by Pecho Rico. Does this ACU have any upgrades now? I thought I saw it upgrading there, but I guess not. And it's so weak, I think, uh, with this many Tech 2 units, if they just came in and focused on it, I think they can kill it. But at the same time, Bellacor really needs to take some risks. Fatality. Yeah, full retreat for Cyrax, who calls GG. Yeah, that was very solid play from uh, Pachirico. And uh, this push with the PD was very nice. Also, I think he did a little more raiding up on top. So, uh, he retains his uh, championship. Hopefully, people enjoy this one. People should post more replays uh, from the other divisions. I really like to keep track of what's going on in this journey. Looking at the stats. I think that was just a kill. Yeah. Pretty big advantage. For Pachirico. In terms of power, actually, Bellacor being ahead, but not really sure if that did anything for him. 